My choice is in what I should be like, how I should live, how to support this person in this particular family. Or, for example, we've gathered here with you, and I can choose right now, in this moment, what to talk about. You, of course, are providing me with themes, but I choose what to say and how to say it, what to feel, what to experience, what sense to impart into it, what to pass on to the audience, those who would be watching this, however. For example, if it's fate that I happen to be in this particular shop, but I'm the one who chooses what to buy. For example, all of us go to buy food, elementary, true, right? At least once in your life. We're destined to go food shopping. We're born in a time when we don't need to grow food ourselves and milk a cow. We get milk in the shop, we get radish, apples and so on, all in the shop. I go and I choose what to buy in that shop. Chips or potatoes to fry them at home for my beloved family. Or just buy chips and eat them on the way. To me, that's the difference between fate and choice. Choice is what I feel, and fate is what I live through, no matter what training I'd go through, or books I'd read, or people I'd meet. So I meet them because I need to turn somewhere. That's why those people are on my path, because I'm supposed to be in that situation. I will be in that situation anyway, but how I will behave in it, that's a choice. For example, in my story, it was the illness. I could have chosen to be disabled and live that way. For instance, I made a choice not to just be a healthy person, but right now I also have no disability or anything like that. Apart from that, to support a maximum number of people in their recovery from chronic serious illnesses when they have no hope or ability. There are many stories in my experience where doctors and tests confirm that for the people in my training classes. This I could choose. About changes. I generally don't like this word, although I do use it in training because people use it a lot at present. I prefer to do it differently, not to change the attitude, but take other actions. It usually happens like this. A person comes and says, I want to change something, and when he starts changing something, it turns out the opposite way. For example, I'm living in the family right now that I don't like, and it means I should change this family, or change the attitude towards this family, and start loving it. I am for the person changing his actions, doing other things. He can just start going to work with love, and start doing his job qualitatively, or he can go and get another education to advance his professional skills. And then, strangely enough or not, changes start happening in the family, the changes he's been waiting for so long for, or to support a friend so that she would get married. He's not engaged in his family, but in someone's family, and things happen in that family. So you can do a lot of things differently, the actions must be different. Actions not inside the family, for example, or with work or something else. It's not to change attitude, but change action itself, drastically change them at times. I made this experiment. For one action that I don't like in my experience, I can do a minimum of 300 other actions. It's not a fact that I like them, but while I'm doing them, something else starts to happen. Something that inspires me and encourages. Inspiration for me is probably not the same as for other people. It's when you get a new breath. But for the new breath to appear, the body needs to exhale completely. I've done sports for many years. And when you're running competitively and realize that one more step and you'll definitely, surely die, for sure, for certainly. It's happened many times. And something appears that helps not to just finish the run, but be one of the first few to finish, or set a new record, your new personal one, or for the region, or something else. 
Inspiration for me is when I reach that moment, when everything's run out, faith, fear, I'm not afraid anymore of anything. When opportunities run out, when there are no people who support you, when I myself understand that I definitely won't be able to realize a dream, then when I know that I must be moving forward, whether I make that dream happen or not, it becomes not that important, and aspiration gives an opportunity to walk on further to one's dream. I think I get myself to that state quite often, when a second breath is needed, an inspiration that helps me to move on to my dream, which I can't say that it's the dream that inspires me. It's important for me to find out if it's my dream or not mine. I'll be able to find out when I realize it, so I have to get myself inspired. When you believe, it's always important to remember that faith without deeds is dead. And every day you must do something that will bring you closer to the dream, or bring others closer to theirs. It's important to act without pausing for some moments or some days, but every day to do, do, do the deeds which will allow you to maybe believe more, or maybe to realize a few dreams along the way which you didn't even suspect of. In conclusion, I'd like to say, allow yourself to dream to the maximum, without any discounts, but to the maximum by the biggest option you think or know is impracticable. But maybe everything will work out and happen for you. And if you consider yourself the most unique, inimitable, most valuable person, then right now, right this day, simply get up and start doing some things that will lead you to the realization of your dream. And some things that will aid realization of dreams of your friends or parents, close family members, your children, or maybe you'll be able to realize someone else's dreams. I propose that you start the most interesting and unique game of your life, dream realization. And let this dream that you'll realize become first or maybe second, third, fifth or tenth or other in your collection of dreams that you've realized throughout your life. And I think that will be your destiny, which you'll make and pass on to your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, someone else. And they'll remember that they had a grandmother or grandfather who had a simple hobby of making dreams come true.